All right, everybody, and we are live from Kansas. All right, everybody, and we are live from Kansas. All right, everybody, we are live. Oh, my God. I'm going to kill you. (laughs) (laughs) I am excited to be here this evening with y'all, and uh, welcome to Bird Dog Chat. Let's do some check-ins this evening, but while people are bopping in, I want to give you just a quick rundown. This episode specifically is titled, What is Eltasaur? We've talked about it, we've hinted at it, we've mentioned, and there's been a lot of people messaging, what, what is this? We want more information. So we're going to give you a little bigger rundown on that. I mean, as best as we can explain it. And uh, we have some fun other things going on that we want to make sure and touch on. And as always, we'll be playing bird dog chat. Uh-huh. So get your what bird are we dog giving away this evening or bird dog chat, bird dog bingo. Bingo. Um, so you can get your bingo card on patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. Yeah, I just updated the link there for you. It's the same link every week, but it's easier to find it if it's at the top, which we don't post a ton on Patreon, so it's not difficult to find. Yeah, but. and that's something that people ask all the time. Like, hey, I joined Patreon, and it doesn't really seem like you're super active on like the posts and things. And you're right. We're really not. We don't put a ton into the posting on Patreon. It's more of a one-on-one platform where we're messaging you back and forth. Uh, So that's where we put our time, effort, and energy is answering your questions, you know, getting into those uh, direct messages and talking with you there. So the other thing that's kind of cool about it is it is a dog training, bird dog training community. And there is a community section where you can interact with other people. Um, I believe we are just shy of 500 patrons right now. Uh, That number is ever fluctuating. It kind of ebbs and flows as we gain people and lose people and whatever, but always trending up. We've kind of hovered at the 500 number for quite some time, so maybe that'll be our cap. I don't know. Um, But there's a good-sized community there for folks to interact with each other, hopefully being able to have the opportunity to meet somebody maybe in your area or close to you that allows you to network yeah. with somebody to train with and to talk things. with to communicate bird yeah. dog wise for sure or not but let's get rolling with some check-ins i will start reading these cuz you suck at it i don't come on now <laughs> And because tonight is uber super duper special, because it's Wednesday night, I thought bourbon sounded fantastic. This one, as you can see, has been drank a little bit, and that uh, means that it's good. Knob Creek Single Barrel Select. This is from Egbert uh, Liquor in town. This is one of their Single Barrel Select Mm. bourbons. Franchy. Franchy. Egbert Celebration 2022. Mm. I'm going to start rolling through some check-ins while you pour yourself a pour. We got Dan and Callie here and Mitch and a 15-week-old GSP puppy, Clutch. Hey, I like the name inspired from you all from Minnesota. And you'll see us at Pheasant Fest. That is awesome. We'll be talking a little bit about that this evening. And we've got Caleb um, from Three Oaks Kennels, West Tennessee, Hey, Kelly and Mac and Jax from New Jersey. Good to have you on here. As always, and we appreciate you helping with some of the, um, what is that called? Moderation. I was going to say mentoring, but I knew that wasn't the right word I was looking for. Um, We got a Kansan. Hey, Ian. We appreciate you. Kansan or Missouri? He said checking in from Kansas, so. Oh, um, I, I don't know. Do we need to give his whole life story on like the... Where do you live? <laughs> Where do you live? What exactly. You Could you like type in your address, please, Ian? Just kidding. Springfield, Illinois. We got Robert. We got Ian. Hey, we got a couple people in here that I am excited to t- talk about a little bit later. Uh, we've got Wisconsin and hey, Melanie Duncan and Sully from Minnesota, Ostego, Minnesota, New Hampshire. <laughs> There's no delay. We were checked in at 7:30 according to the time on my computer. 
Uh, we've got South Carolina checking in and from Maine, Gilbert, Arizona. That's probably warmer than here. Piedmont, South Dakota, New York. Hey, Mark, you've got Sierra back with you. Uh, we just got to see you guys this weekend. And Nate Roberts from Pennsylvania, Arizona, so Southern California, Atlanta, Texas, Wisconsin, Seattle, Washington, Hutchinson, Kansas. Oh, Annie, you're back from Texas. Got me all excited there for a second, and then I was like, oh, you're just back from Texas. Tallahassee, it's Florida. It's just Annie. Not just Annie, but just back from Texas. Oh, dang, Kat. You've been checking in from Texas lately. Uh, Tallahassee, Florida, Rochester, Minnesota, Portland, Oregon, Massachusetts, California, Northern California. I mean, California is a big state. You kind of got to say where you're where. Central, Northern, Southern, Memphis, me and Waylon are playing. Oh, hi from, so, I'm confused. Are you from Memphis, Tennessee, or is your dog's name Memphis? Because it could go either way. Me and Waylon are playing. Memphis, me and Waylon are playing. There is no commas, so like I'm a little confused. Punctuation saves lives, people. <laughs> Cottonwood, California, oh, Kelso, Washington, College Station, Texas, Punky, Questy Pup, and uh, hey, Charles, there you are from Texas, from El Tesoro. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later. Minnesota. See you at Fez and Baton Fest. Baton Rouge. We both will be there. Unless any of the, you know, like, SHIT hits the fan between now and then, which it won't, so we'll be fine. Baton Rouge. Uh, are you going to say Knoxville, it? Tennessee? Okanama Walk. Where? Oh. You did it. I think you got it right. Okanama Walk, Wisconsin. Rush City, Minnesota. Johnston, Iowa. New Pup Whaling. Yes. Hey, Hayes. Uh, yes. Okay. So I just didn't read the name. Hold on. Scrolling up. Yes. I know it was Whaling. So you're from Memphis. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Northern Carolina and Georgia. Thank you guys all for checking in. It's fun to see where you all are from and who is local and non-local. I don't think we saw a single international check-in currently, so stay tuned. Eastern Washington. So tonight, guys, uh, like Ethan mentioned, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the El Tesoro program that we are um, working with El Tesoro on, and a little bit about Pheasant Fest, and a few other little announcements that we've got going on. So, just a brief breakdown, if you haven't already. I see there's quite a few more people bopped in. Uh, anyone that is a patron, if you're not a patron, you can sign up for as little as five dollars a month. For those of you that don't know what Patreon is, it's our dog training community that is set up as a subscription service, so you can actually reach out. Talk to Kat and I on the daily and ask questions about uh, almost every day. I'm pretty dang good. Um, there are some times where things happen and I get a day behind. But um, ask dog training questions as well as, but not limited to, live video consults. Where I get to actually watch a training session or just kind of break down plans and we have a conversation about where you're at and where you need to go. Um, Patreon is the largest supporter of everything that we do in Standing Stone and has been for a very long time. So that includes equipment, that includes uh, people. Dustin, our new video editor slash videographer, help all the way around in this department is awesome. Um, everything Patreon, every dollar is going back into creating more content and spending more time with y'all. So um, all of that being said, you can sign up for as little as $5 a month. That allows you access to get a card. Tonight, we're giving away a... Nail trimming package. Yes, so uh, we found a new grinder that we like a lot. And Super that, simple, easy to use, mm -hmm. Dremel brand still. Yep, it has on and off, and the on is at the appropriate RPMs. We've seen some different ones that have one speed or two speeds, and usually they're too slow or too fast. Um, or you have kind of some middle grounds, even the ones that we've used in the past that are really nice, still fall in the category of like, I feel like this is a little too slow or ah, this is probably too fast. So, and the other thing is, as soon as you turn it on, it's always at like too high of an RPM and it's like, and gets a little startling for some of the 
puppies. How was that? I'm not doing it again. Anyway, so nail trimming package. You get a new Dremel that we found that we love, as well as our absolute favorite nail trimmer, which is Safari brand, and some styptic powder just in case. So you have an oops. Yep. That would be uh, just a quick place the order at standingstonesupply.com. Message if you win. First person to get a bingo is the winner. So if you have questions, let us know. But we're going to do some some chit-chatting. And then if you have questions, throw them in the comments. We will get to those kind of in the second half-ish of this hour. Um, Super chats will get answered first. So if you have, we're not getting to your question, which we try to get to as many as we can. It's burning a hole in your pocket. You want to move to the front of the list. Super chat, baby. That's right. So. Let's get started talking about the El Tesoro program. Big thing to break down is El Tesoro's private ranch. They reached out to us and wanted to basically, uh, they wanted to provide an experience that was different from anything that you could find anywhere else. And what I, I think it's pretty easy to say in a bird hunting environment that truly dogs make the situation. Um, you can have birds, you can shoot birds um, here and there, anywhere, everywhere. You can you can go on wild bird hunts, you can go on pen raiser bird hunts. Everything bird hunting related can happen anywhere. But truly seeing amazing dog work and dog handling, which is as much, if not more important than the dog work itself or providing that, all of those things require, you know, a special focus and special dogs and special people. So they reached out to us and said, is this something that you can help us with? And I said, I, I think we can do that. Feel pretty confident in our dogs and our team and Basically, we have started the process of developing a crew of dogs that would go through the standing stone training process and development process and all be from standing stone kennel breedings. So um, this is an amazing opportunity that we and our dogs have been provided that allows us to um, continue developing our program in conjunction with El Tesoro, um, not instead of El Tesoro, but as a partnership on some of the dogs, as well as these dogs are gaining an incredible amount of bird experience, which once they're at the level that they have to be trained to, to perform um, on these hunts, like they need to, steady to wing shot and fall, being released for retrieves, having little cockers flush in front of them, things like that. It is allowing them to be prepared to such a high level of obedience and steadiness that they're going to be able to fly through any of that advanced level training if they all are testing, excuse me, if they haven't, haven't already had it. So master hunter level testing or utility level testing. So we've got quite a few dogs down there this year because this program just started. It's a year old and um, to have dogs that are ready to that level doesn't happen overnight, guys. If you are training your own bird dog, you know that it doesn't happen overnight um, to get to that level. It takes time. It takes training. It takes experience. um, And these dogs uh, aren't going to do that from one year to the next. So we were able to utilize a lot of the dogs that we already had to that level. Um, Some of the dogs, like if you see on the thumbnail, are a combination of Ethan and I's personal dogs like Nix and Grit and Muddy and Thunder and Allie and Quest, um, as well as some of Charles's and Annie's personal dogs. So Breezy and Timber and Arrow and um, they and Mako. And they are down there doing their thing. But these are all dogs that are titled Master Hunters, titled Utility Dogs, because they've been there, done that. So now what we are doing is selecting dogs from some of our breedings to keep, to train, to prepare for the El Tesoro program. To, because, you know, Nix is 12, man. He's going to be 12 in March. So he's not going to be down there doing this every year. He needs, um, he needs to live the cushy life back up in Kansas with mama in her bed. 
Absolutely. So the one of the questions kind of came through there. The ranch is located south of San Antonio, so it's like South Texas slash the edge of South Texas. I don't know. I feel like every place you get south in Texas, they're like, yeah, we're on the edge of South Texas, and until you get to Brownsville, and they're like, we're on the edge of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's so it's south. The and we couldn't do it with all of the without all of the pieces here mixed together. Charles is doing. Charles is down there running the dogs, handling them day in and day out, taking care of them, twenty four seven. And been there um, since November. Gets to come back in March. Yes, and they are hunting both wild quail and a good amount of liberated birds. All quail hunting for the whole thing, though. Um, the I think they ordered. 11,000, which was uh, just a bit excessive, but they are putting the, it sure feels like South Texas. Yeah, I mean, it's down there, guys, but the um, quail are being released basically into larger coveys, um, not dizzied one bird in a clump of grass kind of deal. So you're getting covey rises and you're getting um, residual birds and it's, it's, uh, it's fun. Okay, so and those cockers make it even more fun because they light a fire on those quail and they don't want to sit and they are popping and getting up wild and it's fun. Hopefully in 23 season, in the 23 season, we'll have the opportunity to do a lot more um, content, basically creating videos of what's happening and, and put some really cool stuff together for you guys. This was... Uh, uh, year one year one Learn, learning how just things about work. under the belt there and we're excited to have uh charlie back up here when we will be training prepping preparing dogs for hunt tests and knob to tests and trials um all spring and summer as well as prepping the dogs for the fall our older string hopefully a handful of those dogs are going to trickle off and a few of the new up and comers are going to join that. Um, at least get to go down for quote unquote, a puppy hunt. You well, know? there will be both. So some of the younger dogs, meaning like tricks should be down there this year, which again are our personal dogs, yep. not an El Tesoro collab on these yet. Uh, but splash and hazel should be down there. So there's three younger dogs of it. Then, um, what we have thus far is Doc. You've seen some information of him. And East, which he's been a little bit on the IR list, but is um, getting back in really good shape. And you're going to start seeing a lot more of him popping up. So he um, he injured himself really badly. And I don't remember if we actually talked much about this, but running through the field, hit a washout, bam, face smash into the other side of the washout and literally took him to the vet because he was immobile and he had broke his neck guys. Um, there is a fractured vertebrae, um, on the x-ray and he was on um, high doses of steroids for inflammation so that we made sure his spinal cord wasn't compromised. In the words of Mike Tyson, his back was broken. It, it was, was spinal. spinal. Mm hmm. And uh, he had to literally sit and rest and on lead only potty breaks and things like that for months, yeah. letting this um, fracture heal and then evaluating the level of mobility and recuperation that he had after that. So um, he is on the recovery list. He seems to be A-OK, -okay, um, but has spent a considerable amount of his puppy development time resting, recovering, healing. So um, he's going to get back rolling at it. So Doc and East, and then we've got a number of other young puppies that we, obviously guys, we have some of our own personal young puppies as well as these El Tesoro puppies, which you've probably seen lots of posts about them. And we could not do it all without <laughs> some of <laughs> Calgary, Canada. We've got our first international check-in. That's Bingo. awesome. Um, but we could not do all of these puppy raisings because, like Ethan mentioned, all of these puppies that are being selected and raised for El Tesoro are being, are being raised, developed, trained exactly like we would with one of our personal dogs. So that means in a house um, with people developing them, and we can't do it all. So we've got 
very close friends, clients that we have worked with extensively in the past, um, helping develop and raise some of these puppies. So Ian Moody's got one of our puppies, Little Vale, from the Trix and uh, Vex Litter, a litter mate to Hex, which uh, she's um, rocking and rolling and... Uh, <laughs> Hex is a little uh, behind the ball, if you will, because we've got to video all his stuff. So she's doing a great job. We've also got uh, Taylor from the Lily Vex Litter. And Robert, who is Lily's owner, is working on raising and developing her. And I'm excited to see some of her progress, which is exciting. Um, and, and the fact that he's got mama is really cool that we're able to see um, her development through that process. And then we've got, who else do we have? We've got Journey. Journey, yeah. From the Quest Vex Litter. Also have a puppy um, from that breeding for ourself. Um, that's Glitch. And um, Tessa, one of our head tra or, um, assistant trainers here at the kennel and works a lot on obedience, and this is going to be a really good opportunity for her to get a little more involved in some of the field stuff, is uh, Raising Journey. And then um, Ethan's parents have decided that they are going to help us Gluttons out. Gluttons for punishment. Well, they've raised <laughs> and worked with one of the puppies, um, a short hair puppy from our program in the past. So uh, they are excited for this opportunity as well. And they've got another dog in the house that's getting older, so they, they want a little puppy energy back. And they're raising Cass, which is from the Hazel Thunder Litter. So trying to get a bunch of puppies up and running so that we can start, like I said, supplementing some of the dogs, the older dogs that have been provided from our personal string, um, kind of getting moved off that string sooner rather than later. And like we said, uh, it's not going to happen overnight. So we got to start now and we got to, we got to hit it hard if we're going to start developing some of those puppies to start that replacement process. hundred percent. So a couple things to point out, cause this is the, one of the number one questions. Are they offering turkey hunts? Are they offering deer hunts? Can we come down and quail hunt? Can we do all these things. Like I mentioned before, it's, it's a private ranch. They don't offer hunts. They don't sell hunts. It is um, by invite only. And in the words of folks at the ranch, you have to know Papa, which uh, would be Mr. Lane and uh, super, uh, just, uh, just an awesome guy. He's a really cool person to know. Everybody at the ranch there has been awesome. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's cool. Uh, I, I get kind of this way about it. I mean, it's a it's a very cool opportunity. It's a very cool program, and it gets it's kind of hard to explain. It's I humbling mean, it's that we were selected, I guess, if you reached will. Reached out to, yeah, yep. yeah, hundred percent. So to be um, the bird dog people for this program, absolutely. It's for lack of a better word, it's, it's word, really it's cool. really cool. It's really cool. So. Um, I think that's the, the, the main gist of it. There's a lot of people around us that are helping a lot to make this happen. And we want to make sure that uh, everybody knows we aren't doing this ourselves and that without our team, um, we couldn't do this. Ever growing, we couldn't do this. Yep. It's, we couldn't Absolutely do all of the things. Absolutely appreciate 100%. it. So thank you to everybody. And hopefully it answers some questions. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to throw it in there. We'll, we'll try and get to those too. But that is, that is El Tesoro. So. <laughs> um now somebody already says bingo <laughs> gotta check the card all right throw us card number and we'll we'll double check for you the um that's awesome the i think yeah that's it we'll check for you uh -huh. we remember the things we say sometimes <laughs> we so, try anyhow Next thing I want to talk about that's kind of fun. This is a little bit of a sidestep story. Um, it is pigeon related. So if you happen to have that card <laughs> and you just got another one there, if you paid attention to that, uh, huh. um, two things. First and foremost, I wish I should really go get him to show off. He's kind of a cool looking bird. Could you, could you, you want a brief intermission for like, it'd take me two minutes to go grab it. Okay, I'll talk about something while right. you go get your pigeon. Okay, well, Ethan runs and grabs his pigeons. This is <laughs> pigeon to show you for this story. Um, I want to share this really cool thing that um, we got in the mail from Beast Feast, Maine. 
Um, how far are we from Wichita? Like 45 minutes, 50 minutes, depending on exactly where uh, you're measuring from in Wichita. Uh, but got this really cool thing from um, some new subscribers. They have a nine-month-old Brittany. Um, it's Dana and Debbie, and their puppy is named Ringo. And they have been watching our YouTube videos while they've been looking for training tips. And they wish they found us sooner, which I feel like is um, once people find our, whether it's social media, Instagram, or our YouTube channel, they're like, wow, I wish I would have known this, about this longer ago. But um, they are part of this non for profit Beast Feast Maine. Um, that they produce steak sauces. So I'm going to show you this with Pinecone Kitchen, which I will try and show you without my face messing it up. I don't know. It's probably not working. Uh, but these are, it says, give a dog a bone steak sauce for canine charity. And they sent us a couple bottles of this. We haven't tried it yet, but we plan to. Um, but they say with the sale of each item, the profit goes to help dog friends um, and their owners that may need help with vet care and to help out with shelters. So um, it's a really cool thing that they're doing. We were super happy that they sent us stuff. And I definitely wanted to mention it because, um, if you guys are looking to support a charity, you like steak sauces, things like that, definitely check them out. It's beastfeastmain.net. Oh, there it is. 354E4C. Mm -hmm. Let's check her out. View cards. There's quite a few people playing, bingo. Here we go. No, somebody else says they've got a bingo, just in case. That's not no. accurate. Right here. Three, five, yeah. Uh, mm, we did say that. That is correct. I don't remember you saying that. Mm -hmm. And he baited us into saying that. <laughs> I don't think Ethan said that. I Ethan don't think says so. the whole aspect of, if anybody thinks he said the whole aspect of, throw it out there. I, I guess technically we, we said talked about pheasant, pheasant fest, fest mm -hmm. but if yep. you, that's, but I don't that's think you said that. that. I don't that's think you said that. That's stretching that square a little bit, but the, the whole aspect of, <laughs> I'm going to have to say, I'm surprised that that's a thing that I say, but uh, I believe that it is. But I don't believe that you said it tonight, so we'll see. Ethan, you out of breath? <sighs> yes. He ran really fast. I did. Yeah, dang. Am I breathing that bad? <sighs> if you ain't trained, are you cheating? Are you even trying? <laughs> Aha! So there is uh, still available bingoisms here. Okay, Ethan wants to show off his pretty pigeon here. Now, to be fair, I've heard this story, and it's really freaking cool, even though I'm not a pigeon person. Can you grab that side of my headphone? <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> I wanted to. I, wanted I, to, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to, like, pop it onto your ear and not flip it over. All right. So there will be a fun video uh, about this, but I did, I did want to say um, – are you gonna Are you gonna pick him up? Oh, are you just gonna put him next to us? All right, this is the bird at the f the flying D that I um, tenth place, big money winner. It's a, the best. I wouldn't say the best placement, but the largest money winner of the season for me. And then here is I named him Horsepower, by the way. And if you want to know more about this and lineage and everything else, you got to watch my video uh, on the guy with the pink gun channel that'll be coming out shortly. Do, 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 do. I didn't really hurt him. It was like a gentle 
pop with the headphone. He's fine. All right, so this guy is a very unique looking pigeon. He's got a feather, feather on, on his, his face. beak. Yep. He's got lots of he's feathers on his face, but um, this would be, he's got like a perfect little tux going on there and a patchy, a patchy eye on this side and then a less patchy white head there. Uh, very, he's got white flights on both wings here. Whoa, hello, sorry. i yeah. get you back, Mom. Well, almost. He's, he's, on my, he's in you my used corner. Used your pigeon as a weapon. Yeah, he's in my corner for sure. Um, so... Is he in quarantine? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, but this is what the story is about. So uh, a unique bird in and of itself. And so I called to talk to, well, I got a call today from Paul that runs a flying D race down there, which is where this guy flew, finished, I think took 200th and 260th place or something a little back past uh, halfway mark. Whatever. He was an hour-ish out. Didn't do horrible, but didn't do well. And I get a call from Paul. He says, do you want the rest of your birds? Because five of my, I sent six birds to this race. Five of the six finished the final race. Six of the six made it to the final race, which is not normal. I mean, like 50% is a good number for most of the races. And 100% of my birds made it there. So that says something. And the... Yes, more pigeon keeping videos is coming very soon. So, um, as well as we have pigeon keeping items added to the store, the specific products that we use to make life easier for you and keep your birds healthier. But, so anyhow, I call Paul and talking to him, or he called me. There you go. Doesn't matter. We're on the phone together, and he says, You want me to ship these birds back to you? And I'm like, well, you know, and he's like, all right, well, none of these birds are really right home about on how their performance was at this specific race. Um, but everybody that had extra birds kind of talked me into flying old birds. And what that means basically is that they're going to fly. All of the races we've done so far would be yearlings. These would be old birds, meaning they fly spring summer time frame instead of in their first year category as yearlings. So, and they've already flown back. They They've trained already flown. to that loft. Yep. So the only place that they can fly like that at this point would be there at his loft. And he said, do you want your birds to fly or do you want me to ship them back to you? And I said, uh, let me talk to the boss. So I call uh, Which Lou Which is not up. me. No. It is not me. <laughs> no. Call uh, Lou up and he said, yeah, fly him in old bird races. You've got your winner, the uh, horsepower is what I named him, and we'll explain why. But the um, he said, uh, yeah, fly him old birds. So I said, okay. So I asked, called Paul back, said, fly him old birds. He said, I told you you should have flown him old birds. I'm glad that the your your boss man agrees with me. So um, I said, but I have this one bird that I had grabbed at the race because he was easy to spot. He's very unique. It was, you know, picking you him out of 400 him. birds. It was simple. So I grabbed him and expecting to bring all of them home. He says, yeah, go ahead and get him back down here. And I said, well, should I ship him down to you? He said, well, uh, how far are you from here? And I said, uh, about five hours. He goes, why don't, he says, why don't just pick a, a sunny day and send him. <laughs> Full send. Full send. I said, I'm, you mean fly him down? He said, It'll be faster and more reliable than the United States Postal Service right now. So, uh, yes, Bluebird Day. He said, let the sun come up and uh, send him. He'll make it here. So, I did a little looking. It's 311 miles via, uh, via pigeon. Literally. And this Friday, there is a bright, sunny, full sun Bluebird Day all the way to Texas with an approximately 10 mile an hour north wind. So he'll get a little bit of assistance headed down there, but not a ton. And uh, I'm going to put one of my uh, GPS bands on him. So if he makes it, we'll have all of the data on the specific route he took, how fast he flew, and uh, kind of some cool stuff. Again, we'll, we'll throw that information in uh guy with the pink gun video if he makes it if he doesn't sad day he's gone 
We'll, but, pro- we'll still probably put it in a video. Yeah, we'll talk about it. But I'll give you an update either way. But he will be flying Friday once the sun kind of clears the horizon, gets up. I'm going to let him go out there on the hill and see if he heads off in the right direction. And so I just have to say, this is this is kind of cool to me, honestly. Like, I am not Warm, one of warming up to it. like mm-hmm. pigeon okay. fans, yep, right? Yep, yep, like, yep. I put up with some of this. But... This is like the messenger pigeon thing. This is exactly how it was done. Like these pigeons were taught to home to a specific place. And then those pigeons were taken away from that place to another village or another castle or another place. And then if they needed to send a message back, they would write a little message, put it on their leg and send it back. So essentially like these past civilizations that were using these homing pigeons were like one loft racing these things. It's kind of cool, but also like very time consuming. It definitely the takes Florida some... race is done and done. Yeah. The Florida race is done and done. And I, I mean, placed in the money. So <laughs> we'll talk about that too. It was a good season of racing birds for me, especially being the second year in it. Um, these are two male birds. They're chasing each other around, beating each other up in that pen down there. So you're going to have to go put them away here. Uh, well, I'm just going to hold on to this one for a little bit. And what? Nothing. You need to listen to the podcast about the history of pigeon. I, I need time, Charlie. I need time. He is going to have a little bit of time, though, because he is going all the way to South Carolina. Yeah, so some fun, uh, cool new stuff. We're going to be doing a lot more with Lone Duck and Bob down there, Uncle Bob. We have a um, – We're going to help do some videoing with him. And, yeah, uh, trying to figure out how to say those words. Yes, we're going to help him film some videos, and we're going to be – doing a little more of the editing for them. So there would be a lot more combined stuff. We do have Speaking a date. Speaking of Mike Tyson, pigeons. Yeah. It kind of, uh, kind of funny thing, crazy thing is, uh, there we got another bingo. Throw the card out there, big dog. Elijah, you are like a super winner. Cause I think you won last week. You did. <laughs> you are paying attention, man. That's what you're Dirty doing. Dirty dog. Yeah, that's it. It's mostly just paying attention. So. Um, the, oh, yeah, uh, Bob's, I don't know how to do that. Oh, you sh- view it. But we need to find that. I don't know how to find that oh, on the oh, bingo oh, oh, thing. Oh, 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 sorry. Hmm. Da 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 da. Where is it at? I don't know. Go back. It's the one. This one. Hmm. Well, that one definitely didn't win. Is that the one that's pulling off? I don't know. Go back. Yeah. What what bird dog? (laughs) Assisted. Assisted victories here. Um, What bird dog legend did we mention? I don't think we did. Reference a bird dog legend. I don't think we've referenced... Let us know. We we miss our own thing, so. Mhm. I don't think I don't think we're there yet, folks. It's still on the table. Uh. Vex is legendary. Yes, he's. I don't know that that's a bird dog legend. It's a legendary bird dog. <laughs> I guess Robert also agrees that Vex is a legend. We just talked about a Vex Throw, puppy. We talked about Vex. Yeah, litters with Vex. So throw a poll up there and ask everybody if they feel like Vex is a bird dog legend. Define bird dog legend. I don't have to throw a poll up there. Yeah, you do. You know how. I don't, but you do. Yeah, there we go. 
Type it, please. You got a pigeon in your hand? I do. Are you just happy to see me? You were going there, weren't you? <laughs> I was thinking about it. Yeah. And then do I just ask it? Maybe? I don't think so. Bob is a gun dog legend. Yeah, so like I was thinking a bird dog legend yeah. was like a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Survey says. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know. Like I was see. thinking bird dog legend would be I, I don't bird know. Bird dog legend would be like Delmar Smith is a bird dog legend. Don't think you can count that now. This is just a sample. Is this a yeah, a come sample on. Example. Come on now. I think it's but, still on the table. We put the thing up there, yeah, I we'll guess. See, we'll see. see how many people like you. I may <laughs> still veto it. I have the power. <laughs> <laughs> but um ultimately uh ultimately where were we at? <laughs> I don't even know. I totally lost track of time here. I don't know. We talked about pigeons, and then I was like, forgot about pigeons. That's the design meant to be a person. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, by the way, a- Grit would totally steal a chicken breast from the counter. Yeah, she Speaking would. Speaking from experience <laughs> only, Charlie. But she's so sweet and innocent. Like, you would never think it was her. You'd blame it on Nick's. 100%. Okay, where were we at before we got on this, like, bingo tangent? I'm confused. Feral pigeons, Mike Tyson. Oh, we were talking about Mike Tyson. I said Lou, my mentor, knows Mike Tyson, and they hang out on occasion-ish kind of whatever. So that's kind of cool. There you go. Connection. Connections. Okay. The pigeon thing with Mike Tyson is real. And we digress. Does anybody have any questions this evening? Yeah, Did we have talk, anything else somebody, that we wanted to so talk about? So somebody asked a question. It was up a little ways about malocclusion. Um, there it is. There you go. 86 GTO car. Um, have you guys ever dealt with puppies with malocclusion? If so, have they made good bird dogs as adults? So, so malocclusion is uh, misaligned teeth or bad bites, okay. things like that. Um, sure. Uh, those pop up, whether it's in a breeding program or just dogs in for training, absolutely, where dogs either have like a butt bite where those top and bottom teeth line up or a overbite, an underbite option. So this would be an overbite where the top is way over that bottom and then an underbite where the top is behind the upper bite. And then you got like misalignments where the they're just not scissor bites or the front don't align. Um, those things happen. Honestly, I've never seen it affect a dog in the sense of being um, not a good bird dog or affecting their health or their comfort or anything like that. Um, They're just kind of got a misaligned mouth and they still can retrieve just fine, eat just fine. Um, The only thing you would want to watch is like if they are very overshot, those Um, lower canines you want to make sure aren't going to accidentally grow up into the roof of their mouth. So a lot of times veterinarians will recommend pulling those lower canines so that they can, A, see if the jaw will kind of realign itself, the lower jaw will grow a little bit and uh, realign everything, but also gives that time to happen. Um, And then those teeth can grow in without causing any ill effects um, on the upper jaw. So I've never seen it causing any issues. Um, we've literally had a dog. What was that pointer that like was missing teeth? It wasn't like a malocclusion or misalignment. Um, just like from trauma was missing like the lower canine and something in her tongue. Puddin. Her tongue always hung out of her head out that side because she had no teeth on that side. Do you remember? Who was that again? Puddin. Oh, yeah. Puddin. That was literally her name. Puddin, P-U-D-D-I-N, not pudding. No, no pudding. Puddin. Puddin. You you put the wrong and fastest still on the wrong syllable. Puddin. Yeah, puddin, not put in. <laughs> I was trying to let you know what I was saying, but she was missing teeth on one side of her face, like the lower teeth or something, and her tongue always hung. It did. 100%. Hung out of her head. Stuck outside of her head. She looked simple. Bless her heart, <laughs> and uh, absolutely great for a dog. Retrieved just fine, no issues. So things like that happen, uh, but never seen it affect a dog. 
Uh, Any other questions? Dun, dun, listen dun. podcast. Yes, I do know listen podcast. Send me the link again, Charlie. I probably it's lost probably it. buried, buried. Scroll. I'm reading. Sorry. Well, you read slow. <laughs> Scroll. I've already read all those. So here's the results. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, Vex is a bird 80. dog legend. Vex is a legendary bird dog. Only an 84 percent. Bird yeah, dog legend, legendary though. bird dog, folks. However, he will be even more legendary when he becomes Hunt Test Sire of the Year when we run as many of his pup pups through AKC Hunt Test as we can. So if you have a Vex puppy, let us know and we can talk to you about what it takes to run them through an AKC Hunt Test, whether that's Junior Hunter or if your puppies or dog is more prepared running through senior or master hunter. Basically what that means is Vex or they assign points for each title, whether that's a junior hunter title, a master hunter, a senior hunter title, and those points get added up and the dog with the most points at the end of the year becomes the hunt test sire of the year. And we really want to do that for Vex this year. That is our goal. And that would really make him a bird dog legend if you ask me. So that'd be cool got a puppy let us know if you're interested in pursuing that knob creek is setting in ah uh, she I'll hasn't bet. yet but grit sneaky i thought she wasn't that sneaky um how was the hog hunting from a helicopter absolutely one of the coolest things that I have ever done. I will tell you, I'm not a big heights person. I'm not a big speed person. And it was fun. And he did all kinds of crazy stuff. I know he could have been crazier in how he helicoptered, but uh, it was really freaking cool. So definitely 10 out of 10 would recommend with Dusty, the helicopter pilot. I could imagine that there would be other helicopter pilots not as good. This guy was on top of it. He was he was uh very professional too. So So many questions. There you go. Roll with it. Um any experience with Johnny Houses for doing dog training with quail? Do they work? More troubles created or worthwhile? Yeah, so Johnny Houses for dog training are awesome if you can maintain them. Okay. So that is the key. Um, the most difficult part is the maintaining the quail living portion. Uh, they quail like come out of the egg trying to die. So you've got to be <laughs> so I crack. How do I kill myself today? Um, it, it can be tough. The key with it is whatever your space is and quail don't need much. So if you were to build like a four by six or a four by four Johnny house, you could probably put, I feel like 10, 10 birds per square foot. It's a lot. And as long as they're getting flown regularly, you fly about half at a time. The rest of them will call the birds in. As long as you fly them regularly, they take off. They fly great. They act wild-esque. They'll fly out and spread out all over the place and do all of the things. So it's cool. It's, re it's really, really cool. Shoot a handful of them. Add a handful as you're shooting a handful, and they figure it out. If you can maintain one, a Johnny House is an absolutely fantastic way to train young dogs. What is y'all's take on bottled bird scent? I think it's gimmicky and unnecessary. Um, I'll eat my words when you see it on our website. No, nah, I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, I feel I, I truly feel like it's gimmicky and, and unnecessary. So it's definitely not something that I would say. Oh, throw that scent on a bumper or a wing, and then that's going to be what you use to help your dog learn how to point. Absolutely not. No. Uh, you need live birds for that. You, you, there's no substitute for pointing um, scent. And sure, you can put that on a bumper and they can use their nose to find that bumper for retrieves and things like that. And 
it's exposure to that scent, but dogs are going to use their nose to find that bumper, whether you've got bird scent on it or not, because they smell the bumper. They smell their own dog slobber on that bumper. Dogs have a very complex nose and they don't need that bird scent in order to find and smell and retrieve that bumper, for example. Nope. And once you have a bumper that's retrieved more than once, it pretty much smells like dog slobber. So they have the ability to learn to use their nose to find them without the bird scent. So, meh. Waste of your money. Let's go with that. We, we, we just are teaching them to use their nose to find something that's important. So the bumper is important to them, and it's got dog slobber on it. So they smell that, they find that. When you're shooting birds for them, they recognize that the bird scent's important, and that bird is what they're smelling and finding and retrieving. Same with for tracking. You know, we're teaching dogs to use their nose with purpose, whether they're tracking a pheasant or a duck or a chucker. Um, heck, even a hot dog. People use those for tracking drills because they are teaching dogs to use their nose to follow a scent to a reward. So um, I think the last thing is just standingstonesupply.com. Some of you may know, some of you may not. That's our supply, dog training supply store. We don't have scents on there for the reason of we don't believe in the thing. The the, literally the you, only scent that is on there is associated with Shed dog training kits. Correct. And that's different. Because you are trying to teach them to be able to find that, and it's difficult to get what is bottled up in that bottle. It's difficult to find access to those things. Um, For that type of scent recognition. Yeah. So then here comes the argument, right? Well, if we're going to... Let's argue with ourselves. I like it. Yeah. Debate. I'm going to go chucker hunting. I don't have access... Well, chuckers more. Let's go... I'm going to go rough grouse hunting. I have not ever found a rough grouse. Don't have access to wings or scent or uh, there's not very many of them around, but there's enough around. How do I teach my dog what a rough grouse smells like? My opinion on that is take them to the area where rough grouse are. But here, here's the me advocating devil's advocating myself now in this conversation. Okay. This is getting complex. Um, they're bird dogs, so they're naturally inclined to find birds, right? So it may take a bird or two for them to go, oh, wow, rough grouse. That's important. But they're going to come across it, and it's going to be one of those things that they go, ooh, this is a bird. That's bird smells, and I'm a bird dog. Now, the opposite being, go ahead. You finish your- I'm just saying, the opposite being a shed, which is what you just mentioned, is a non-moving, essentially boring object. We have to teach them that the sight portion of it is important. We have to teach them that the scent portion of it is important. And without a super strong retriever, moving in the direction that learning either of them are important because it basically is a chunk of bone that just sits there and is boring, is difficult. So we need scent. We need the visual aspect of things to teach that. And so this is an interesting interesting, good Lord, um, conversation about scent recognition and dogs' noses and things like that and different game species, right? So you were talking about rough grouse and other birds and chucker and huns and all that stuff. Yeah. So dogs that enter our training program, for example, working with Hex right now, Hex has literally had a bird introduction, Mm -hmm. which we did with pheasants or no, we didn't. We did with pigeons, guys. Smack me upside the head. We did it with pigeons. <laughs> Have another gin and tonic cat. That's fine. Uh, did it with pigeons. So he had pigeon in his mouth, in his nose, all the things. Then we just did his pointing pigeons in launchers video, which will be coming out soon. And he smelled and pointed pigeons. He has not been exposed to chucker in the sense of a chucker introduction from birds or tracking or in launchers or anything like that. And literally, I won't do anything specific to introducing him to chucker, except I will put, when we are to that point in his training, a chucker in a launcher. And he will go out and he will point that the exact same way he pointed a pigeon in a launcher because he's recognizing that bird scent is important. It's different. It's something to be aware of. 
So this is one of those things that I don't really know how to explain it to you other than... That's how dogs' brains work. That's how dogs' brains work. And their um, noses work. That's how well-bred bird dogs' brains work. They right. understand birds are important. Now, the flip side of it from a scent recognition standpoint is a lot of short hairs are being utilized for drug and bomb detection, detection work in general, right? Those things have to be taught. They are not important scents until built importance around them, introduced and importantized via, (laughs) I know, making up words now. That's probably a square on there, and if it's not, Kelly, it should be. Ethan makes up random word um, that may or may not exist. Most likely does not exist. So in that situation, you can teach with pseudo sense, or you can actually teach with um, actual sense. And what I found is like dog's noses. Then I've, you'll get arrested for possession. Well, you have to have a license in order to do these kidding. things. I'm sorry. It was so funny. I had to, it was funny to me. I had to throw it out there. Okay. So, um, some of the folks that I've talked to, because we've been approached a lot about detection work and fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it is it's not this sounds horrible to say out loud. It's not financially beneficial for us at this point to move our program in the direction of developing detection dogs unless we are providing a start to finish product for said end user, okay? So I could train a dog that is, uh, let's go with suicide bomber dog. This would be a dog that would be at like a football stadium or a major arena and its job literally is to search the crowd of 60,000 people that are coming in and out and milling around and doing everything else looking for explosive scent and being able to trail that to an individual hopefully hope to god that never happens in the united states or anywhere but it's still something to prepare for right that would be an act of terrorism and a decent place to do it if you think about like life from a terrorist standpoint. They, um, a dog from our program named Blaze, you can actually look up Blaze the Detection Dog's information. Either if you search Facebook or you search Google, you will find it. The dog was trained, purchased from us, and then trained by K2 Solutions. And then they didn't end up selling her because she was so good. They just used her as a demo dog. To show off, like, look at all the cool stuff we can do. Blaze was actually a Hemi Tango puppy, which uh, Charles owns a Littermate too, which is Trig. Trigger. Yep. Triggy. Um, you're talking about an insane amount of desire to work, drive, and willingness to just work. So whatever is now important is important. And she literally did that. Like, detected like did a demo at a stadium and found somebody carrying a backpack full of not live explosives but explosive scent basically and and found trailed and found this dog in this arena so it's i mean that person, amongst person in the arena. a person excuse me uh no suicide dogs attending football uh events but very very cool stuff that all requires long story short all requires Um, scent recognition and building importance around it where bird dogs are naturally inclined to understand bird scent because of breeding and hundreds of years. So great question. Lots of answers. That was fantastic. Let's move on. This one says here, Todd from Wisconsin. Is Cisco still available? Todd, reach out to me. I'd love to chat with you more about what you are looking for in a dog. What else we got? Um, Somebody asked about uh, what are your thoughts on quartering drills with a check cord? Interesting. We like to encourage our dogs to intelligently use their nose to cover ground, work wind, um, and objectives where the birds are primarily going to be um, without overhandling them. The most important tool you have with you looking for birds in the field is a dog. That's and their it. nose. Yeah. That's it, right? So if you want to find birds, you need to trust that the dog itself is going to help find them for you within reason. 
we have a general area that we're going to hunt. Go in a general direction that you feel is going to be most beneficial in your path and then trust and follow your dog. Now, if you're hunting in a big line of people, let's say we got six or eight or ten and we're going to walk in this straight line, the dog's going to run back and forth. Try and keep them in the general vicinity of you. You have to kind of overhandle a little bit in that setup, but for the most part, what do we got? There she is. Yeah. Charles found it. Happy eighth birthday to Blaze, which is a long time ago, but um, I guess she does work for the Floyd County Police Department now. Bring your head to bring, come together. There it goes. And if Charles was here with us now, he could have just like... Push Bingo, bango, pushed a button, and everybody could have seen a cool picture of Blaze, the uh, the wonder dog. The detection dog. Explosive detection expert. Yes. Um. So, um, don't believe in teaching bird dogs quartering. Somebody also asked, um, what what's cat drinking? <laughs> Gin and uh-huh. tonics. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, so somebody asked, it was up here, I don't know where it is, talk more about AKC hunt tests. That is a whole, like, n- conversation in and of itself. I will make note, so when we do one of our next live chats, we will talk about hunt tests, because we are rolling into hunt test season, and so let's talk about it and break down junior hunter, senior hunter, master hunter, we will do that, Matthew Hines. So make sure that you are checking our social for when we announce that that's going to be the live stream chat that we do. But um, probably one of the next ones since we're going to be rolling right into hunt test season shortly. What's the first hunt test that we have on the docket? Let me look at the calendar. I think I'm coming out by you, Robert. I don't know 100%, isn't it? Illinois. Uh, um, the weekend of the 18th and 19th of March, we've got one on the calendar for Wright City, Missouri. Ah, that's St. Louis. Looks right? like a double double list. That is St. Louis area, Wright Wright City, Missouri. Uh, it sounds like it's in Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis area. <laughs> What, what I thought he was thinking? from Illinois. Is is that near St. Louis? Do you know? If you weren't holding a pigeon, you could use your hands and do something. I think that's an invitation, <laughs> folks. It is not. And on that note, we're done for this evening. <gasps> Getting pretty close. Uh, Getting pretty close. I've got to Google stuff for Ethan now. Well, Hold look on. That up. Hold on. I'm looking it up. Um, exciting information. If you think things are exciting this evening, uh, we plan to be doing a demo videos of what the tests themselves look like. Demonstrations of an example of what your dog should look like for different portions of the tests and different expectations. So 45 minutes away. That's how far St. Louis is from Wright City. 48 minutes. So, out that direction. In the grand scheme of the world, it's drastically closer to St. Louis than it is to us. Yeah. Uh, But we're going to be doing videos talking about different testing and kind of a demonstration of what those tests would look like. So, someone asked, I keep, they asked the question twice. So, I was going to try and get to it, but I can't find it. It was something about adult dogs with gun sensitivity. Something, something, something. Oh, you got to name your splashy pigeon before he takes off for his trek back to Texas, somebody said. Well. We'll name it in the video. Yeah. Oh, also, I did want to mention Piper's down there right now. She's, um, we have partnered with buddy of mine, Adam, and appreciate him letting us send her down there to work a little bit this fall. It'll be good for her. She's going to be running her master's this spring. Found the question. All right. Last one for the evening. Yep. Yep. Dalton Shotkoski. Have you ever dealt with a gun-shy adult, and did the dog make a good bird dog? Yes, and yes. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. But yes and yes. Yes and yes. I mean, it's it happens, and if you get in a, a gun sensitivity situation and you let it lapse to adult dog, it's still fixable. I think gun sensitivity is... Um, Directly it, related to mental stability. It is. I think that usually it's fixable. I think it's say most of the time, if not all of the time, it's fixable. It's a matter of two... How long? My bingo card disappeared. The dingo ate your baby. Well, and we do have a super chat somehow. Is there information on the super chat? It doesn't look like it. Thanks. Thank you, Guillermo. Guillermo. Okay, well, I mispronounced it. Sorry. Maybe. There's another bingo. We got lots of bingos. Yeah, I think that we just... Gus, that Vex apparently by popular vote is this considered is a, a bird person. dog legend. So he there's two more people. I thought we were giving it to the first right. bird dog legend. Yeah, who is the winner? I thought Elijah won because the last question was a bird dog legend. And no, I overturned that. You all oh. you all suck. Let's go to the next one. Uh, a person. Wow. Even the person that wrote the card Ethan's said it's supposed to be. brutally comment, honest comment. Whoa, my Okay. Bingo. Let's look at a couple of these, and then let's get. The. Two, three, eight, four, two, eight. Thunderbutt. Yeah. International check-in happened. Share images on cell phone. Uh, yeah, did yep. that. Gift from a fan or patron. Yep. Yep. And then random rant. Bingo. Yep. Okay, I believe. Let's double check and make sure that we didn't miss somebody ahead of that. Looks like Robert. Oh, S no, no. That was this one. Two. Oh, no. Caleb Walker. Yep, I'm pretty sure. Two, three. All right. I think that's it. Caleb Walker, send us a message on Patreon with your address info where we're shipping the stuff. Yeah, that's it. Bingo, bingo. Nice job. Thanks, everybody, for playing. Thanks, everybody, for being here with us. This is awesome because some nights we don't get, like, any people bingo, bango in it. And tonight it was like a battle of bingos. A bingo battle. Yes, I vetoed it. Okay, see, I Kelly's thought... keeping you on. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, shoot. Well, sorry, Don Fish Hunt. We appreciate you here playing. You'll get an opportunity next week. Okay, probably not next week because you're not going to be in town. But uh, Next time we do this, okay. we'll keep announcements rolling so everybody knows. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We appreciate it. Um, we really do enjoy the time. We look forward to these and love to have a drink with you. And, uh, yeah, love to... I respect the decision. <laughs> uh, good. We, we love being here with you all. We love having the chats, answering questions, kind of updating on things. We hope to see everybody at Pheasant Fest. Uh, we will and be there. And shoot us messages or questions or things like like the, I want to hear more about AKC hunt tests. Those are great suggestions for topics that we'd love to talk about. So shoot us some so that we've got ideas about what you guys actually want to hear about on these live chats. Perfect. I'm the guy with the pink gun.